As David reported, two White House officials told CBS News they knew about Shanahan's family turmoil. President Trump addressed the issue earlier Tuesday before he left for his campaign rally in Orlando. Pat Shanahan, who is a wonderful person, uh, is, as you know, going to take some time off for fa family matters. And I want to thank him for his service. He's a terrific person, and uh, it's a difficult time for Pat, but he's going to take a little time off for family service and, and for, uh, for working, working things out. And I think you know about it. You know very well about it. CBS News White House producer Finn Gomez joins me now from the White House. Hi, Finn. How much Good did talking. the White House previously know about Shanahan's history? Well, I talked to a couple of White House sources today, and a senior administration source, a senior administration official, told me uh, specifically they knew about that they knew that they knew about the uh, the incident involving his son from 2011, but they did not specifically know about the other incidents, the other domestic domestic incidents that involved uh, the the, uh, the um, Shanahan and his and his then mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another White House source said that you know they they known about this for months. Actually, they known about this, this the incident with the son. For months, so it's it's something they were aware of. So, can you walk us through how this sort of all unraveled? As of Tuesday morning, White House officials said the nomination was still on the table. So, what happened in between? Well, um, I was told by um, by the White House, by my sources in the White House today, that uh, um, as there was some media reports uh, bubbling up that were coming out, and Shanahan was being interviewed by them, including the Washington Post, about these incidents, these incidents, these domestic incidents that occurred with his family, uh, some troubling incidences. Um, uh, the, the, he came to the White House today. The, the White House was informed yesterday. The pre, um, Shanahan came to the White House today, met with the chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, and then out informed him, and then afterwards went to the Oval Office and spoke to the president. Um, he thought it was what was best not only for his family but for the president as well. The president agreed to the withdrawal, and, um, and there you go. It's, yeah. uh, he's no longer the... the uh, you, you no, no longer will be the nominee for the president for the uh, for SECDEF. It happened quickly. All right, shifting yeah. gears now, the president was also asked on the South Lawn a question about the Central Park Five. I want to play that exchange. Let's listen. Will you apologize for the Central Park Five? They've been exonerated. There have been videos and movies shown about the case, and you came out with a full page ad saying that they should die. They say you have the death penalty. Why do you bring that question up now? It's an interesting time to bring it up. Uh, you have people on both sides of that. They admitted their guilt. If you look at Linda Fairstein and if you look at some of the prosecutors, uh, they think that the city should never have settled that case. So we'll leave it at that. You heard him say they admitted their guilt. So what kind of pushback can the White House expect from this comment? Uh, I'm at issue specifically is the you know the ad that he took out in 1989 concerning the Central Park Five. Uh, these these five teenagers were later exonerated, but at the time, uh, President Trump, who was just you know with the well-known celebrity, the financial wizard guru type, uh, said that they he called for their execution. Um, mm -hmm. It was this this message that was very controversial at the time. Obviously, they were exonerated, as I just mentioned, and I think there will be some blowback. We are seeing blowback on on, on you know social media and on um, you know uh, also from. Critics on the president from on the, on the left on the left front, people mm -hmm. activists, you know, um, uh, with the uh, um, Black Lives Movement as well. That you're seeing some criticism towards the president um, that why he didn't take a more maybe a more forceful approach and why didn't he simply just apologize? Right. All right. So, Finn, CBS News confirms that the White House is reasserting executive privilege with respect to former White House aide Hope Hicks's testimony before the House Judiciary Committee, which is supposed to take place Wednesday. So what more can you tell us about this? Yes, uh, so it's happening behind closed doors. Uh, Hope Hicks, who is uh, basically uh, like a daughter to the president, who was there from the beginning, uh, from his uh, from 2016 to just a short time ago, a little while ago, when he was when she became communications director for the president, um, she's now the uh, she's now executive of Fox Media. But but she will be uh, being grilled tomorrow by the House Judiciary Committee. It's all behind closed doors, as I mentioned, and it's going to be related to uh, five specific incidents that the special counsel Robert Mueller uh, detailed. Uh, in his investigation over the where there was uh, Russia collusion. Um, but the White House has, has said, and my sources who are familiar with the letter, who, who, we've seen the letter now, but we're familiar with the thinking of the White House, uh, say that the, the, the White House is, is planning to invoke immunity uh, and protecting Hicks 
uh, from the grilling uh, on, 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 on any questions related to her experience while she was here at the White House. All right. Well, Finn Gomez at the White House, we thank you for that. Thanks, Tanya.